Okay, quick rant today guys. Uh, I've just moved house and uh, I've had infernal problems with this fridge here which is obviously looks as if it came off the arc and uh, my boiler and the problem with the boiler is that when you turn the hot water on it's a combination boiler is that the wa hot water comes on boiler fires up you may be able to hear that the hot water then gets absolutely scalding hot then the boiler cuts out flame goes out water goes ice cold over the next 30 seconds and then the boiler fires up again and the water becomes scalding hot, alternates. Complete nightmare, completely useless for showering because even though there's a thermostatic valve on the shower, a thermostat's not going to do a lot when your hot water is alternatively ice cold and boiling hot. So I've had about three um, gas engineers in to have a look at this thing, which is an old Vocara. Um, and it's a bit of a bizarre one, it's, you know, it's a Vocara 80, which is like you know, 100,000 BTUs. 100,000 BTUs! You know, that's 30-something kilowatts. You know, this is a tiny two-bedroom modern apartment with double glazing and everything. What the earth do you need 100,000 BTUs per hour for? That's madness! So the boiler's completely oversized. Um, but the other thing is, of course, that uh, could that be part of the problem? Well. We've had several engineers in and they've tried all sorts of things, changing the domestic hot water circuit thermistor, which is that blue thing there connected to the primary, uh, uh, no sorry, that's the hot water, no it's not, it's part of the primary circuit, primary uh, uh, hot water circuit. So just quickly, if you're not familiar with how a combination boiler works, here's your, your combustion chamber and there's a big heat exchanger in there, there's a pump here which pumps the water through the heat exchanger there's a diverter valve which diverts the hot water either out into the um, radiators circuit or into uh, at the back there, there's a little metal tin sandwich which uh, is a plate heat exchanger and that heat exchanger is used for transferring heat from the primary circuit into the potable hot water circuit um, and then you know, that from there it goes to the taps and there's various pressure valves and flow valves and all sorts of stuff and you know I've, the, the engineers have been saying oh no no it's a uh, primary uh, heat exchanger problem the other one says a secondary heat exchanger problem you know they've said it's a bit oh no it's the pump oh no it's the flow valve oh no it's the diverter valve it's the d diverter valve diaphragm this that and the other and you know various parts have been changed no one knows what on earth is wrong with it but you know I, was th I thought about this for a couple of minutes and I thought, well, if the problem is the boiler's overheating because the, um, it's, there's not enough flow rate, well, surely then this, is a, this boiler must have some way of correcting for it. And it does, because if we look at the nameplate here, you can actually see maximum power rating, um, where is it, uh, 29 kilowatts, minimum power rating, 10 kilowatts. Well, you know, the boiler has the capability of reducing the gas pressure. So we fire it up with the water, boiler flames, massive flames come up in through the boiler burner window. I don't know if we can see anything in there. Uh, the water's not actually running at the moment. Massive flames come on, massive flames stay on, water gets absolutely scalding hot. Sounds like the boiler's about to explode from boiling water. Flames still stay massive and then they go out when the boiler trips on the overheat stat. So could it then be the gas, boil, gas valve pressure? So this thing here is um, a little solenoid and uh, inside it there is a little brass tube and in this brass tube is actually the gas pressure regulator valve. Um, so what happens is, is normally the gas pressure is on full and then um, a, uh, no sorry, the gas pressure is on minimum and then when you, a voltage is applied to the solenoid the gas valve opens further. So uh, I put a DMM on the uh, solenoid and sure enough it shows voltage on when uh, the water is cold and then as the water gets hot the voltage disappears indicating that the valve should be switching to lower pressure but the flame stays high. Okay gas valve problem. So I take the solenoid off and um, <coughs> sure enough the gas pressure stays on full, so it's actually a gas valve problem. Well, let's have a look at it. On the front here is a little uh, adjuster knob. 
and guess what? This is the adjusting knob for minimum gas pressure. And guess where it was set to? Maximum. <coughs> so I've had three gas engineers come round to check this boiler. Um, I even told them what the problem was in detail. I told them that the gas valve is not modulating and no one could find this problem. So in frustration after having, you know, having three half days off work, I've come home and I've taken this boiler apart and it took me about five minutes to identify this problem. I've adjusted the gas pressure and now it works beautifully. Meanwhile, the engineers were telling me, oh no, it's the shower valve. The shower valve? Hang on a second. You've just told, I've just shown you and I've, you've actually seen for yourself that the hot tap alternates between scalding and ice cold. How can it possibly be the shower valve? I mean, what confusion of thought processes is needed to conceive of such an idea, I simply don't know. So anyway, the boiler was incorrectly commissioned when it was last serviced. And, you know, the poor guy that must have been living here before must have been really struggling with uh, his personal hygiene because the hot water is just completely unusable. So uh, I'm going to go and shout at some of uh, these gas engineers, uh, Corgi or Gas Safe or whatever they're called, is the uh, gas safety thing and absolutely give them a rocket, a rocket up their ass because uh, technically it's actually illegal for me to touch the gas regulation valve but you know this is a da this, you know, this is potentially a dangerous fault incorrect gas pressures and the fact that they would miss that during an inspection where you know I basically told them what the fault was is pretty disgraceful okay well, let's go on to the fridge this is some old hoover thing and uh, you know it's a sort of standard fridge you know, larder type fridge, ignore the ice bricks in there, we'll come to those in a moment, and uh, a frost free freezer um, with uh, sort of fan and all the sort of stuff and, 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 and concealed con uh, 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 evaporator coils. But the problem with this thing is that it doesn't get very cold, or at least it doesn't get very cold on the fridge side, and there's a little uh, thermometer on there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's about 11 degrees Celsius, which is about as cold as it gets. Um, you may have seen the last video where I did a power analysis of it. It takes about 100 watts and it runs for about 20 hours out of every 24 hours. So it uses about 2 kilowatt hours per day. And I'm sure 20 hours of compressor time per 24 is a bit excessive. The other problem is, is, is that the fridge temperature never actually gets below about 11 degrees. Um, meanwhile, the, fridge te the freezer temperature uh, gets down to... Uh, let's see if I can find the... Uh, Thermometer, thermometer in here somewhere. Um, oh, there it is. The thermometer gets down to uh, whatever that is, minus 35. Okay, so there's a slight problem here with this thing. Um, freezer is running excessively, fridge isn't doing damn all. And uh, well, when you look at the condenser coils at the back, I mean, the compressor's running, I can feel it running. And these are just very, very lukewarm. And if we come around here, this is actually the discharge line from the compressor and I mean it's it's you know it's it's sort of body temperature um, so there's obviously something badly wrong with it I'm, I'm not an expert in refrigeration I'm kind of guessing it's probably low on refrigerant there's probably a crack or something in the uh, line but uh, I'm hoping somebody who knows about refrigeration will be able to tell me what the matter with it is I suspect it's broken but uh, <coughs> the landlord's not interested so I'm tempted just to chuck it and send them an invoice for the uh, disposal cost Anyway, um, we'll be uh, grateful to hear your input on this. Uh, many thanks. Have a nice day.